Welcome to our review on alkanes and alkenes. First thing you need to understand then is the definition for the word hydrocarbon. Now they like to ask you this for a two mark question. You'll get your first mark if you say that it's a substance made of hydrogen and carbon and the second mark for adding the word only. So make sure you do know that definition of hydrocarbon is something made of hydrogen and carbon only. The first type of hydrocarbon we're going to look at are the alkanes. Now what we've got in that first table then are four alkanes. We know that alkanes because if you look at the names they all end in A-N-E. So no matter what alkane we're looking at they will all have that ending A-N-E to their name. Now the first part of the name just tells us how many carbon atoms there are. So meth is one, eth is two, prop is three and bute is four. So we can see we've got the formulas on the right hand side there and the general formula for an alkane is Cn H2n plus 2. So if you replace n with any number, so if we were to say 4 for example, then C4 H and then it's going to be 2 times 4 plus 2. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So that formula would be C4 H10 as you can see for butane in our table. So make sure you learn that general formula and then obviously whatever number of carbon atoms they give you you can just substitute in that number wherever it says N. With our alkanes then what we find is that they only have single covalent bonds. So every bond within our alkane is a single covalent bond. So they're what's described as a saturated compound. So if on your exam paper they ask you what the word saturated means then your answer can quite simply be that they have single bonds only. Now when we're drawing displayed formulas I've given you three at the bottom there. So what we're going to do is we write out the actual symbol for our chemical first of all. So if we start off with methane on the left that's going to be CH4. So you put your carbon in the middle and carbon can make four bonds and it joins on to four hydrogens and each hydrogen can only make one bond. So you can see we represent our covalent bond by a straight line. So you've got your carbon with four lines coming from it, each one going to a single hydrogen. And you can see that same pattern repeating for ethane and propane, that every carbon has four bonds, whereas each hydrogen only one. The easiest way to draw those displayed formulas for the longer chain alkanes is always start with the carbons and put the right number of carbons in a line join them with their lines and then make sure there are four lines coming off of each carbon atom and on any that aren't joined to another carbon put a hydrogen at the end. The second type of hydrocarbon we're going to look at are the alkenes. Now all of the alkenes have a name that ends in ENE and again the first part tells us how many carbon atoms there are. So ethene has two carbon atoms and it's an alkene. The general formula for our alkenes is CnH 2n. So just substitute in the number where the n is. So if we had a 3 carbon alkene, then it'd be C3H 2 times 3, so 6. So C3H6. One thing we need to remember about our alkenes then is that they have a double covalent bond. So this means they're unsaturated compounds. And again, if on the exam paper they ask you what unsaturated means, your answer is that it has a double covalent bond or a double bond present. So you can see how we draw those in terms of a displayed formula. The double bond has to go between the carbon atoms because remember carbon can make four bonds, hydrogen only one. So you could never have a double bond between a hydrogen atom and something because hydrogen only makes one bond. The last thing we need to understand is how we can test to see whether the chemical we've got in front of us is an alkane or an alkene. And the way we do that is using bromine water. So what we find is that bromine water is going to change from the orange colour, as you can see on the left of the diagram there, to colourless if it's mixed with an alkene. So what we actually find happening here is something called an addition reaction. So what we're actually doing is, if you look at the diagram at the bottom, you can see we've got our alkene there because we've got the double bond and we're adding bromine to it. You can see that at the bottom. What then happens is that double bond gets broken and those carbons then join on to a bromine each. 
So what we end up with is the bromine incorporated into our compound, which means it no longer has that distinctive orange color, it goes colorless instead. So it's a nice simple test, add bromine water, if it goes from orange to colorless, we've got an alkene, if it stays orange, we've got an alkane.